Well, I actually would say I would encourage everybody to have a routine. So just okay. have that routine, get up at the same time, start your day. But beyond that, have flexibility. We also encourage all our team leads to run a daily stand-up. So it's just get everybody in the same team together on, on any of the chat mediums, on any of the video calls, and just everybody takes two minutes. Everyone just talks about what they're going to get done in the day. If nothing else, it builds that sense of that we are a team together and we're working on this together. Welcome to Grow Think Tank. This is the one and only place where you will get insight from the founders and the CEOs of the fastest growing privately held companies. I am the host. My name is Gene Hammett. I help leaders and their teams navigate the defining moments of their growth. Are you ready to grow? This coronavirus has us thinking differently about the way we work, the way we connect together, the way we lead. Today, we're going to talk about remote workers. How do you uh, work and lead remote teams? When you think about the keys to working with remote teams, what comes to mind? Is it the standard things? Is it the things like we should be you know, having a stand-up meeting every day or we should uh, all get dressed? We should all uh, be at our desk between eight and five, just like normal, so, th so that I know you're working there? There's a lot of misconceptions about what works best in a remote environment. Today, we're going to talk about some of those things with our special guest. We have Peter Kopinger. He is the co-founder of Teamwork. Teamwork is a platform for managing work and how people connect together and stay on task and alignment. And it really is a powerful tool. I've used the tool within my own teams. I really love it. Uh, I really wanted to have Peter on here, not to talk about his tool, as amazing as it is, but I wanted him to talk about his experience of leading and managing remote workers and some of the, the insights behind that. Some of the things I like about this is, you know, when you should give negative feedback on text and chat and how to do that. Well, that's a trick question because actually inside here, you should never give negative feedback on texting, SMS, chatting, messenger, any of those kind of channels because it's too easy to misinterpret. Now there's many more insights behind this in today's episode. Thanks for tuning in here to Growth Think Tank. Really excited about sharing this with you. And before you run, I have done so many interviews in the last few weeks. I have such a, an exciting time to share with you that those interviews have been organized into the 12 core principles of fast growth companies. So all you have to do to get that is go to genehammett.com slash worksheet. So you can get the 12 principles and I've been able to uh, go in there and find which episodes will align to each individual episode. When you subscribe to Growth Think Tank, you will find exactly what you need so that you can move forward. And many of them haven't been published yet, depending on when you're hearing this, but you can you can tune in to the date that means the most to you. So here is the interview with Peter. Peter, how are you? I'm very good. How are you? I'm fantastic. Excited to talk to you today on the podcast, Growth Think Tank. Uh, tell us a little bit about teamwork. Yeah, so uh, Teamwork's about 10 years old. Uh, we're a completely self-funded SaaS company. What we do is we make a suite of software that helps businesses run more efficiently and to be more organized. So our biggest product is called Teamwork. It's our work management platform. And uh, it's used by over 20,000 companies all around the world, uh, including some of the biggest names like, um, like Disney, Microsoft Studios, and others. But uh, it's going pretty good. Um, but yeah, we're, over the years, we've helped a lot of companies with remote working, which is uh, very topical at the moment. It is. We are in the midst of, of uh, quarantines and people are learning yeah. to do things differently. And I would imagine work is continuing to, to go on with your company. Yeah, absolutely. So it's weird. We're the same as everyone else. We're in quarantine. We have 260 staff all over the world. Um, 180 here in our city, uh, everybody's working from home, but it's business as usual. Our software just allows you to carry on. Um, we can sign tasks to people. We can see exactly what's going on. We can communicate together. We have chat channels going on. If it, It's kind of ironically actually probably bringing us closer together. Uh, so we're using our own software to do things like uh, sharing pictures of our home offices and our dogs, <laughs> our insights into each other's lives. So, I yeah. have... It's I've had good. a few clients that are talking about there's some unity that's that's coming together as teams and companies are having to, there's some uncertainty out there which brings people together um, as opposed to tearing them apart. So I thought we would talk about 
some of the keys to working with a remote team? You've been doing this for years. Some people have been doing it since Monday. Yeah, uh, so, so, so we've been doing this for years. 30% of our staff are remote and all around the world. And um, so we, we kind of like the hybrid model where we allow, allow 30% of any team, 30 to 40% of any team to be remote. Over the years, we've tried everything from 100% remote to 100% co-located, and we found that mix works best. So companies in the future are going to have to embrace remote work. So you're being kind of forced into it, but it's kind of probably a healthy thing in the long term to embrace it. I think so too. I'm I mean, happy, happy to dig in and share with you some of the tips we have built up over the years. There's some special things that are different about remote work. Uh, I put out some videos, and we're going to talk about some some extra things today, but why is being intentional in leadership so important during this time of dealing with remote workers? Oh, well, first of all, everybody, there's just so much uncertainty out there. Nobody knows how long this is going to last. Just today, we had an all, a virtual all hands for staff uh, where we were just reassuring them. Like, nobody knows how long this is going to go on for. Is it going to be a month of lockdown or two months of lockdown or three months of lockdown or a year? We just don't know yet. Um, our assumption is that it's just going to be a month. But I think, uh, you know, people that are pregnant, people that are going for mortgages, people that have not gone on their lives, people with elderly parents, they need reassurance and they need strong leadership at this time. And they need great software and they need great companies. And they, uh, we're reassuring our staff that if any of you do get sick, that we will back you 100%. And that message is so critical to get out. Hold on. Peter just talked about reassuring your workers. Let's be honest here. You may not be exactly clear about where we're going to come out of this um, and, and what is the world will look like. I do know that things will be different. The way we travel, the way we make plans, the way we wash our hands will be different, but also the way we work. And so you really have to reassure people about some of the things that they're scared of. Have conversations about those topics. Take the time. It's not just about crisis management. It's not just about finances and about customer success and, and everything. It's about taking care of your employees. You as a leader need to lead. And if you want to take the time to do email, great. But the real value is to making sure people feel reassured. Back to Peter. I think a lot of leaders have not had to communicate in this way. They, they, just, they really just want the work to get done. Um, but this is yep. a time when we really need leaders and you are going to share with us some specific things you've learned that we could all, you know, embrace yeah. as we try to grow together and, and lead these virtual teams. So let's dive into yeah. it. You have, uh, I asked you to do some research and just kind of organize your thoughts around the golden rules of, of leading a virtual team. So what are you, what are you coming up with? Yeah, so I suppose there's the standard advice that everybody out there can give you. You'll, you know, if you, if you Google, yeah, how to do remote work. You'll, you'll get the standard advice, which recommends that the staff get up at the same time every day and get dressed and turn up and uh, do an all hands meeting in the morning and, um, and just stay connected to each other and have your daily routine. That's all kind of the bog standard advice that you'll get out there. I wanted to kind of give you some of the insights that we've got over the years or the kind of top tips we've developed on how to do remote work. So a couple of, a couple of the, the insights, I've already mentioned one, is that you know, when, we're, when we're out of this crisis, we, we recommend the blend of uh, about 40% of every team should be remote in the future. Um, and that's just the balance that works really well for us to have the right balance between um, taking advantage of allowing the flexibility of remote staff and having people co-located. So it's the right balance between cost and flexibility. But moving on, there's, there's a very important rule that we have in our company. We call it the golden rule. And the golden rule is that you will never, ever, ever argue over any text medium, be that email, SMS, or chat. If you've got uh, something negative to say to someone or something that could in any way be misinterpreted, pick up the phone, have that conversation, or have a, have a Zoom chat like we are now. It's amazing the problems that golden rule will solve. And it's, in our company, it's a firing offense. If you're being negative to somebody on a chat medium, it's a firing offense. It's that important. Because you know yourself, if you don't put that little smiley face at the end of your message, it can be interpreted completely the wrong way when you're just trying to have a bit of fun, right? Yes, absolutely. I, and I know there's probably a story there, and I don't know, I don't <laughs> have any names or anything like that, but where does this come from? Well, I think in the early days, myself and my co-founder were both such passionate people that um, 
we were just misinterpreting each other and banging off emails to each other at 12 o'clock at night. And often when we just picked up the phone and just had that conversation, it was, you know, just a, a very simple misinterpretation. And over the years, I myself and my co-founder have been working together 20 years now. I call him my work wife. And um, we've just learned this is what works. You know, just pick up the phone. Um, you know, sometimes you'd be you're angry over something, you pick up the phone and you, it's solved in four seconds, right? And the other thing is everyone's, everyone can be keyboard warriors when they're angry banging off that all caps messages. I mean, that doesn't help anyone. So this golden rule has really helped us just, uh, just get things done with, in a stress-free way. Uh, moving on, I have another um, golden rule here. So people, especially with remote work now, a lot of people are using chat software. And the danger with chat software is brilliant. It allows everybody to be connected, but the problem with it, it's also a huge distraction. So, you know, chat messages are coming in 24 seven, all right around the clock. People are spending more time checking chat messages and responding to chat messages than actually getting work done. So we've introduced uh, what we call the golden hour, golden hours at teamwork. So between two o'clock and four o'clock every day, everybody should be in do not disturb mode in our chat software. And that's your time to really knuckle down and get work done. And the flip side of that is we have an hour before that where everybody has to be available. So that's the time you know that everybody is on chat and everybody's going to react to your messages. The other thing we tell people is chat should be uh, synchronous. You should not expect an immediate answer all the time. You know, so we like email, we encourage you to uh, come into work in the morning, check your email, check your email a couple of hours later and check your emails at six o'clock in the evening. You should not be on email or chat all day long because that is just not productive. Peter just talked about the golden hours. I really appreciate this because it's a powerful way to look at how do you take time to actually focus on getting the important work done. I've seen my clients take golden hours even to the point of having golden days, if you will, where they don't have meetings on certain days because what they were struggling with was how to find the time to get the work done and meetings were consuming so much time. They're in a creative space and they needed time to be creative and think and, and really create strategies and time to do the work. It wasn't just meetings. So they, they really protected those times and they end up turning it into not just one day, but they two afternoons each week, they don't do meetings. So imagine what the golden hours would do for your business. Do you have the courage to say, you're gonna be able to focus on your work? Here's the benefit. Not only do they get to focus on their work, you get to focus on your work. The golden hours, great idea. Back to Peter. I love, um, uh, let's talk about this a little bit, the golden hours. When you have, yeah. um, you said it's two to four? Yeah, two to four is what we do. Does that provide this like, that's when, are people saving up that, that creative time thinking for those, those hours where they're not being distracted? Yeah, so people do tend to schedule their meetings and things that they know they'll be interrupted with in the mornings. It's not to say that they, they won't sometimes get in flow in the morning, but it's just that they know that if they've got something that's particularly difficult or an awkward task that just involves, you know, you know laser focus, that that is an ideal time to work on it. We also have some other rules in the company, like back when we're around the office, if someone's door is closed, door to their office closed, we, we say never interrupt that person because they're in flow. That's the signal that they're in flow. Leave them in flow and leave them get work done. Because in, in the nature of knowledge work, if somebody, if you're in the zone and somebody interrupts you, you may not get back in that zone for another week. So <laughs> it's so critical to, to do everything you can to. to Is there a version to, of that for the home office? <laughs> for, for the home office, yeah. Well, this is exactly. It. I mean, every chat software out there has the do not disturb, right? But. I think, I think you got to allow your employees, employees by default won't feel empowered to turn on that do not disturb mode. But we say to our employees, it's okay not to reply to chat messages instantly. It's okay to turn on your do not disturb. It's okay to actually get work done. Imagine that it's actually okay to get work done. So that's, I, that is the danger of remote work and the danger of chat is that people are just popping in and out all day. I do the other find, thing kind of that, sorry, I do find that leaders- sorry, I was just gonna say kind of, what goes hand in hand with this is that um, you want to give flexibility to your employees. If, if employees are working from home, there's a very good chance that they're going to be distracted, that they're going to be picking up the kids, that you know, they're going to have to pop out to do something that they may have to come and go during the day. We are completely cool with that at Teamwork. As long as, um, as, long as your team lead knows, you can work your own hours. So you can just make the hours up for us. We just, um, 
our software allows every employee just track their own time and they might work 30 hours one week and they might make up their last time over the next two weeks. And we don't mind at the end of the day as long as the work gets done. And I think that's very important going ahead that businesses are, are open to that flexibility. Let me ask you a question there, Peter. You had mentioned some standard advice is to get up at the same time and get dressed. Um, yes. And uh, there's some funny stories I, I could tell you about this from a Zoom standpoint, but you're suggesting that that's not necessarily as necessary as having that flexibility and, and giving them and empowering them to get their work done the way it best works for them around their, their schedule. Well, I actually would say I would encourage everybody to have a routine. So just okay. have that routine, get up at the same time, start your day. But beyond that, have flexibility. We also encourage all our team leads to run a daily stand-up. So it's just get everybody in the same team together on, on any of the chat mediums and any video calls. And just everybody takes two minutes. Everyone just talks about what they're going to get done today. If nothing else, it builds that sense of that we are a team together and we're working on this together. So um, that's a, a really strong tip to build, build a strong culture as well and make a team feel connected. A part of what we do with that as well is we ask everybody to um, share a bit of good news, something that's going on in your life. It might be, you know, that your, your kid took their first steps yesterday. It, it might be that you, you had the most amazing steak of your life last night. It might be just that you're watching a really interesting show, but it just, it brings that human connection together as well, which is really important to be deliberate about that human connection in times like this. And when people are kind of feeling alienated, working at home, probably for, you know, for extended periods for what is often the first time in their lives. I, I love that too, because, you know, that connection is very different than talking about the project or the deadline yeah. or the, the metrics or the sales or the, the whatever's going on. It's, it yeah. really does allow people to connect over something personal. And yeah. You get to maybe even see um, what's going on, you know, if they're, distracted a little bit you can you know about their family you know about what's going on for them yeah absolutely even when we're back in the office we do this with all our weekly meetings we have these weekly meetings across every team the first five minutes of the weekly meetings is is kind of just talking about something positive that's going on in your life or just catching every pe other people up and often you don't know that someone on your team is also into kayaking and it just does these little connections um really build a strong sense of team and at the start, it's pretty weird to do if you're used to just like being in business mode all the time and never really digging in. But uh, if you just take that five minutes at the start of your weekly meetings or your daily standups, it's transformational, we feel, to your culture. Peter, when we talked uh, earlier this week, you had mentioned some of the things that you do around core values. Core values have been pretty important for the company to be successful, reaching over 20,000 uh, users of your software. Um, how are you reinforcing the core values in a remote environment? Yeah, so, um, so some of our core values is um, strive for excellence is one of them. So, so like just because you're working at home does not mean we don't expect you to get your work done, to put in the, the right amount of hours, to work efficiently, um, to be there for your team, and uh, to always be learning is another part of this. So one of our core values is that we are a learning company. And, and I feel every company should be in a world that changes so fast. But uh, if you're not the type of person that wants to always be learning, then you're in the wrong company at Teamwork. So we encourage you to continuously share with your team across different chat channels and messages, books you're reading, blog posts you're reading, podcasts you listen to. We have, um, we have different chat channels. We have one called SAS University where, where people just share all sorts of random articles and tips and books that they're reading. We also, when people start in our company, we kind of set the expectation from day one. When you start in our company, you get a, you get a big gift box on your desk or post it out to you if you're working remote. And it's, it's a big black box with a beautiful lid on it and a big green ribbon and a little card signed from us. And when you open the box inside, you've got your laptop and your hoodies and your t-shirts, but then you've got 10 books at that outline, the type of culture we want to have at Teamwork. So um, we, we think that kind of sets the right expectations from day one. But it's important to reinforce all the time that we expect you to be learning and developing. And it's not for us to develop your career. It's for you to develop your own career. When you so, think, um, when you think about um, you know, leading a remote team, anything else yeah. that we haven't discussed that's important for, for our new managers leading these remote yeah. teams? I, th I think trust your employees. So, so this is something that's very hard when your employees are working remote for the first time. 
I think it's, it's very important to, to get everybody together online and just set clear expectations. Let them know that you still expect to hit your targets. Um, let them know that how hard you expect them to be working. Let them know that you're there for them if there's any concerns. But uh, ultimately, you got to trust them. And that, that can be really hard to do at the start. You know, you know that they're, they're at a home environment where they can't even go to a coffee shop in this current environment. So, you know, in a home environment, there's often distractions. You're going to have to be a little bit more flexible and you're going to have to tell them that you, you will be more flexible. But the flip side of you being more flexible is that they have to deliver the results. So I think as long as you're, you're upfront and clear with that. Uh, another, another little tip we recommend is in your, I recommend that every single company out there is using some sort of chat product. So we have, we have a product called Teamwork Chat. It's completely free, but you could be using Slack or Microsoft Teams or one of the other hundreds. But um, highly recommend every single company in the world in this day and age should have it. There's no excuses. There's many free ones out there. But on that, create a working from home channel. And what we do in our working from home channel is we ask everybody to, you know, we might say, hey, everybody, if you're up for it, why don't you post up uh, pictures of your current work environment? Hey, if you're up for it, post up pictures of your pets, your dogs, your what you've been up to this weekend. And it's just, it creates this just sense of fun in the company. So just today we, we did it and we had, um, we said, hey, if you're up for it, you know, whoever's up for it, you know, if you want to share pictures of your current working environment, go for it. And well, we've had hundreds of pictures of all sorts of random, crazy, quirky working environments all around the world posted up. And again, it just builds that sense of we're all in this together um, and just a sense of fun and connection to each other. I love that you added that because it really could humanize this. We, this is one of the few times that I remember we've all been through hard times, but usually others around us aren't struggling. This is one of those times when we know the whole world is feeling the effects of this. So Peter, I really appreciate you being here on the podcast, sharing yeah. these golden rules and these insights of years of working with remote teams. And I just, just add on to your note there, just one last thing in this, you know, yeah. I would encourage everyone to uh, look after your team. If you see it, if you feel there's a team member who's feeling down, pick up that phone, make those random calls and connections because that can, that can be transformational. Love it. Well, thanks for being here. Absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. I love this conversation. Really powerful about how you can actually take some of the tips inside here, practical and actionable elements, and use them inside your leadership. Include them in your culture, your organization, to work better as a remote team. Today, we talked about some of the key things. If you're struggling to understand your place as a leader, struggling to see the vision, or maybe even manage the crisis in front of you, I'd love to get to know you. I'd love to give you some time. I'd love to serve you any way I can. Make sure you reach out to me, gene at genehemmett.com. As always, lead with courage. We'll see you next time.